We're going to solve a rational inequality. This is from uh, 4.4. It is uh, problem number 44. And just like with um, polynomial inequalities, the first thing I have to do is get all the terms over to one side of the inequality sign and set the other side equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract this from both sides. I'm going to have 5 over x minus 3 minus 3 over x plus 1 greater than 0. So I need to treat the left side over here as, as its own function um, in order to find out where it's going to be greater than 0. But I can't combine them because they don't have common denominators. So I have to first find the common denominator. And if you remember, if you were just doing this with numbers, if I was doing 3 fifths uh, minus uh, 2 thirds, I have to first get a common denominator. And I would do that by multiplying this piece here by 1, but 1 in the form of 3 over 3, the denominator of the 2 thirds. And this piece over here, by 5 over 5, the denominator of the other side there, and I would then have 9 fifteenths minus 10 fifteenths, so that would give me negative 1 fifteenths. I just have to find a common denominator in order to make that happen. Well, it's the same thing with this, except that instead of dealing with just numbers, I'm dealing with some, uh, some, some binomials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this piece here by x plus 1 divided by x plus 1. And I'm going to multiply this piece here by x minus 3 over x minus 3, just the way I did with the, with the numbers. And what I'm going to get is I'm going to get 5x plus 5 over x plus 1 times x minus 3 minus 3x minus 9 over x plus 1 x minus 3. So what I have, and you got to be careful with your uh, arithmetic here, is I have 5x plus 5 minus 3x minus 9, and I put that in parentheses because I have the minus sign, and that minus sign is going to affect both the 3x and the negative 9, over my common denominator, x plus 1, x minus 3. Let's work on the top part of this a little bit, on the numerator a little bit. I have 5x plus 5 minus 3x plus 9 over x plus 1, x minus 3. So that gives me 2x plus 14 over x plus 1, x minus 3, greater than 0. Now when I'm dealing with a rational function, I have to find the zeros and I have to find the vertical asymptotes. I have to divide my graph up into pieces that are separated by the zeros and the vertical asymptotes. So first of all, the vertical asymptotes are going to be where my denominator equals zero. So I have um, a vertical asymptote at negative one and a vertical asymptote at positive three. I guess I probably should have put this into, uh, into uh, simplest form before I did that. Um, simplest form would be um, 2 times x plus 7 over x plus 1, x minus 3. But there is nothing, there are no factors I can cancel out here. Um, so I still do have these two vertical asymptotes. There are no holes in this particular uh, rational function. So I found my vertical asymptotes. Let's write that down there. Vert asymptotes. 
I need to find my zeros. And my zeros are where my numerator is equal to zero. Well, that is at x equals negative 7. So now I, I know that I have vertical asymptotes at negative 1 and 3, a zero at negative 7. That is what's going to divide my graph into intervals. Here is a number line. I have a zero at negative 7 right there. I have a vertical asymptote at negative 1. I'll make that a line just so that I know that it's a vertical asymptote. And I have a vertical asymptote at 3. So I have four intervals to this graph. I have the interval negative infinity to negative 7. I have the interval negative 7 to negative 1. I have the interval negative 1 to 3. And I have the interval 3 to infinity. So those are my four intervals. If a number is positive or negative in any particular interval, all the numbers in that interval are going to be positive or negative. So I need to evaluate, I just need to pick randomly numbers from each interval, and that will help me determine whether the graph is above the, the, the x-axis or below the x-axis in that interval. So I'm going to look at my far left interval, and I'm just going to pick the number, oh, and I'll pick number negative 8 because it's closest to negative 7. So I'm going to use the number negative 8, and I'm going to evaluate my rational function for negative 8. So I would have 2 times negative 8 plus 7 over negative 8 plus 1 times negative 8 minus 3. So that's going to be 2 times negative 1, and it's going to be divided by negative 7 times negative 11. Well, my denominator here is going to be a positive number because I have negative 7 times negative 11. My numerator is going to be a negative number, so I'm going to have um, a negative answer to that. So this particular interval, everything in that interval is going to be negative. Let's go to the next interval between negative 7 and negative 1. Well, I'll, I'll use negative 2, hoping that that'll be a pretty easy number to do. So I have 2 times negative 2 plus 7 over negative 2 plus 1, negative 2 minus 3. So my numerator here is going to be 2 times 5, which is equal to 10. And my denominator here is going to be uh, negative 1 times negative 5, which is going to be uh, positive 5. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. It's a positive number. So everything in this interval here is going to be positive. Let's move on to the next interval. Well, I'm going to use the number 0, of course, because that's my favorite easy number to use. I have 2 times 0 plus 7, so that's going to be a positive. And on the bottom, I'm going to have 1 times negative 3. That's going to be negative. So in this interval here, everything is going to be negative, because a positive divided by a negative is going to be a, ne is going to be a negative. Finally, let's go to our last interval, 3 to infinity. I don't know. I'll, I'll pick 5 as, as the number that I want to use. So I have 2 times 5 plus 7. Well, that's obviously going to be a positive number. No negatives in there at all. And I have 5 plus 1 times 5 minus 3. That's also going to be a positive number. So in this interval here, everything is going to be positive. Now, remember, what I'm trying to find out is where is this greater than zero? So I'm looking for those positive intervals where it's greater than zero. And I think what we should do next is graph it. So I put it into my graphing calculator, as you can see, and I, and I, I want to point out you have to be very careful with your parentheses. You have to put parentheses around um, everything that's going to be in your numerator and everything that's going to be in your denominator. 
So I had to put this extra set of parentheses out here that you might not normally do, and this extra set of parentheses there that you might not know normally do, to very clear, clearly distinguish between my numerator and my denominator. Otherwise, the calculator is going to not know what you're talking about. So I put that in, and I went zoom 6. And I got a pretty nice looking graph. And um, I can see that, um, well, I can certainly see my interval. Uh, I can see my vertical asymptote here at negative 1. And I can see my vertical asymptote at 3. A little bit less clear about negative 7, and we'll get there in a minute. But it's, it's, it's also pretty clear that between um, negative 1 and 3, right here, all my values are negative. So that's pretty well confirmed. And it's also pretty clear that between 3 and infinity, it looks like all my values are going to be positive. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, well, between negative 7 and, 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 and negative 1, and then negative 7 to infinity, that's in this area here. And it's not quite as clear as I would like to see it on my graph. So I'm going to zoom in on that in just a second. So what I did here was I changed my window. I changed my x's from negative 10 to 0. So it gave me a little bit of space on, on either side of this interval that I'm looking at. Just a little bit of space. But the key thing that I did is I made my y minimum negative a half and my y maximum positive a half. So my entire y window is just going from positive a half to negative one half. And when I, when I graph it, I get a very clear picture of how the graph is going right there at negative 7. I can see that it is below 0, and then it hits there at negative 7, and then it goes above 0. So I, I have confirmed that, a, that between negative 7 and negative 1 is positive, and from negative 7 to negative infinity is negative. Having confirmed that, I'm going to go back to what I'm trying to show. I want to find out the intervals where this is greater than, not greater than or equal to, don't do that, is greater than 0. Where is it positive? Well, it is positive in this interval, and it is positive in that interval. So my answer is negative 7, comma, negative 1, union 3, comma, infinity. Those are the x values that will make this inequality true. 